Audiobook title, Hello, I am the hero's father, 01-16, by Lupus Sensei. Ya Asho no Chichi C0.1, Father, Mother, and Son. Claw is a middle-aged man in his village. He is over two meters tall. He is the biggest and the strongest man in his village. His arms and legs are like logs. However, he did not have any useless fat on him, and the word honorable man fit him. His family consists of his loving wife, Wheel, and his 15-year-old son, Arka. The three of them were living happily. Claw's job is as a woodcutter. He prays to the mountain god and lives by cutting down trees. Today, Claw and Arka go to the mountain together. Arka, step back. Yes. After making sure that Arka has stepped back far enough, Claw turns to a giant tree. The diameter of the tree trunk is too big. Even five adults can't enclose it with their hands. It's just too big. Claw has nothing in his hands with such a giant tree in front of him. He is barehanded, but Claw raises his long, big arms and turns his hips to gather strength. His muscles swell, his blood veins appear, build up, build up, build up. Hum, swing. He swings out his strong arm. After a few seconds of silence, the giant tree made a cracking sound and fell down. It was as if it was cut by a sword. Cut this guy apart. Yeah, come on, dad, help me. It'll go faster that way. Don't be a spoiled brat. I'm training you now so you can survive on your own in the future. I didn't ask you to do that. What did you say? Nee. Never mind. Arka shakes his head and begins to prepare. His past experience and his instincts as a man told him to do that. If he angers Claw, he won't get away scot-free. Worst case scenario, he could be killed. Arka's job is to cut apart the fallen trees and turn them into lumber or firewood. He grabs his axe and swings it at the fallen tree. With each swing, the axe cut deeper and deeper into the tree. Arka is not as strong as Claw but strong enough. Claw is simply too out of the ordinary. Two hours had passed since Arka started his work. While he is working, a woman appears from the forest's depths. She looks neat and innocent, with her platinum white hair swaying in the air, and she waves at Claw and Arka. Dear, Arka, I bring your lunch. Thank you. Wheel. Thanks, Mum. I am so hungry. She is Wheel, Claw's wife, and Arka's mother. Claw and Arka decided to stop working and have a lunch break with Wheel. The three sit on a stump and eat Wheel's special jumbo steak sandwich. Arka struggles to bite the steak sandwich as big as Wheel's little face. However, the size of the sandwich seems smaller when it is held by Claw's hand. He ate the entire sandwich in two light bites. Ara Ara. Maybe I should make it a little bigger. No, it's just right. Give me the water. Okay, okay. Wheel puts his hand on the glass and closes his eyes. Water ball. A magic circle appears on her palm, and a small amount of water is poured from it into the glass. Magic. A supernatural power allows a person with magic power to make fire or water out of nothing by following a certain rule. The ability to use magic depends on one's natural talent. This has nothing to do with whether it is inherited or not. It completely depends on one's own talent. Fortunately, Wheel was blessed with magic talent. Claw always has a stern look on his face, but his expression softened when eating Wheel's food. Seeing the two of them in a friendly mood, Arka also bites into his steak sandwich. At that moment, in the depths of the forest, birds suddenly started to fly into the sky. Arka stops his lunch and looks up at the birds. Wheel also looks up with sharp eyes, and Claw looks at the depths of the forest in disbelief. Um, Dad. Don't worry, Arka. Leave it to your dad. Claw takes off his work clothes. There is no scratch on his body, but his well-trained body and tanned skin are so firm that even his son can't help but admire them. His sharp eyes focus on the depths of the forest. He waits for several minutes. As the earth shakes, something comes out of the depths of the forest. Gr ra 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 ra. It looks like a bear. But it is a very big bear. Claw is over two meters tall, but he has to look up to see its head. It has horns on its head and unevenly grown fangs. It also has sharp claws and bloodshot red eyes. It's a monster. I won't speak badly of you. Go back to the forest. Be a good boy. And I'll let you live. Gr ra 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 ra. No choice. I have to protect my family. Claw clenches his fist. Perhaps the monster sees Claw as prey. Roars, and approaches him. His claws are going to cut through Claw. Claw swings his fist toward the incoming claws. Ha. Ooh. 
Claw's fist and the monster's claw collided, creating a shockwave that spread around the area. But, the next moment, the claws cracked, and the monster's front legs were shattered. Gah, fum. He follows up with another attack. He clenches his left hand and swings it at the monster's body. Donk. With a loud sound that echoed through the forest, the hole appeared in that monster's body. It only took a few seconds. In an instant, Claw had slain that monster, so we're having bear steak today. Wheel. Please drain the blood. Okay. Wheel uses her magic to drain the blood and dismantle it. Arka watched the two of them in amazement. As usual, the two of you are amazing. Arka admires and respects his father and mother. Since birth, he has been with them, but he is still not used to this. I'll never make these two angry. Once again, Arka swears in his heart. Yeah, I sure no Chichi C02, the chosen one. Claw, Wheel. And Aku are carrying wood and firewood down the mountain after today's work. Claw carries a wood pile with one hand, while Wheel carries firewood and meat with her magic. Arka is also carrying wood, but it's much smaller than the two. Arka looked at them from behind and sighed softly. He is not as powerful as his father, Claw, nor can she use magic like his mother, Wheel. He couldn't help but compare himself to them, making him feel inferior. The village is located at the foot of the mountain. The sun is setting, and the villagers are usually already inside their houses, but today's situation is different. The villagers are gathering in the village square, and it isn't just the villagers. There is also a group of people who looks like knights. What's going on? I'll go ask. Wait here. Leaving Aka and Wheel behind, Claw headed for the gathering. Village chief. Ooh, Claw. Oh, my lord. That, you. Abiba. Bop. We. We're in big trouble. Village chief. Please calm down, the village chief's complexion was changing so much that he couldn't tell if it was blue, white, or red. Are you Clawdono? A man in armor approached Claw and the village chief, white armor and a white cloak. A rose crest is engraved on his chest, that is the crest of Albert Kingdom. In other words, this knight is working for the Albert Kingdom. The knight is also a medium-sized big man, but Claw gently looks down at him. So big. I get that a lot. So, knight's armor, what do you need from me? That's right. Actually, our saintess has received an oracle from God. The knight takes out a scroll from his pocket and reads it out loud. In the westernmost village, a hero has been born to avenge the demons. He will be the one who defeats and destroys the demon king. Tensions rise among the villagers. The westernmost village. That means this village and the hero who will defeat the demons must be the hero mentioned in their legend. Even Claw's eyes are wide open when he hears this. The knight rolls back the scroll and looks up at Claw. We don't know the age, but the saint Tess says that the word born means either a baby or the youngest person in the village. A baby or the youngest person. Claw looks back. He looks at his son, Arka. I just heard from the village chief. Your son, Arka? is the youngest in this village. Yes, he is. How old is he? He will be 15 this year. 15 years old. That's the right age to join the knights or the guild as a hunter. Arka looked anxious. Wheel holds Arka's hand and smiles gently. Claudono, this is a direct order from the royal family. Excuse me, but I'd like to bring Arka Dona to the capital to be the hero. Claus A stared at Arka. The fact that his son is the hero makes Claw's mind stir. Happiness, loneliness, worry, anxiety, and joy. But if it is an order from the royal family, it can't be helped. Arka, come here. Ye. Yes. Arka put down the firewood and approached Claw. Knight's armor. Please take care of Arka. Da, dad. This is the first time he sees his further bowing to someone. Stunned and unable to swallow the situation, Arka finally realizes that this is a very serious matter. Claw kneels in front of Arka. But he still looks big. It has been a while since he sees Claw's eyes this closely, but Claw's eyes are gentle. He gently pulls Arka into his arms and pats his back. Arka, this is an honor. Saving the worlds is a great honor. You are our hope and our pride. Dad, his father's warmth and kindness, which he hadn't felt in a long time, made his eyes warm. Wheel is also deeply touched. With tears in her eyes, she hugs Arka. The villagers also cheer and shouts in honor, congratulating Aka. Then we will go to the capital tomorrow morning. Please prepare by then. Yes, night armor. Everyone is dancing and singing around the campfire at the center of the village square. In the center of the square, Aka is talking with a girl. 
She is his childhood friend and fiancé, say Aya. She is 17 years old, two years older than Aka. Claw looks at the two of them and bites his meat. Dear, you're eating too much. I can't help but eat. Right. I never thought Aka would be the hero, but it makes me happy. Happy. That's right. They never thought her son would save the world, but more importantly, the worries are greater. Their beloved son is leaving on a dangerous journey. No parents who wouldn't worry about that. Seeing the gloomy look in Claw's eyes, Wheel gently leaned closer. It's okay, he'll be fine. You're right because he is our son. The next day, Arka's departure day, at the village entrance, Arka and the knights have finished their preparations. Sayaya is also there. It seems that Sayaya has decided to accompany and support Arka as his fiance. Claw Dono. Wheel Dono. We'll take care of Arkadono. Yes, please take care of him. Please take care of him. Claw approaches Arka and Sayaya and pats their heads with his big hand. Arka, Sayaya, be careful, okay? Dad, I'm leaving. Father-in-law, leave Arka to me. Hey, Sayaya, what are you talking about? Ara, Arka may be my fiancé, but isn't you like a younger brother to me? Your older sister will keep a close eye on you, Yuzh. The villagers laughed at the couple's interaction. Then Aka Dono, say I Dono, please get into the carriage. Yes, the two get into the carriage and look out the window. Together with the knights, the carriage began to move away. The cheers of the residents continue to echo until their figures are no longer visible. Ya yeah. Asho no Chichi C03, three years later. Decision. Three years later, Claw is working hard as a woodcutter as usual today. Over the past three years. His body seems to have grown even bigger than before. He chops down trees with his bare hands every day and processes them into lumber and firewood. Recently, there has been so much extra wood. He has been selling it not only to the village but also to neighboring villages and towns. Huff. After transporting the wood to the neighboring village and finishing today's work, Claw walks through the gloomy mountain. In the mountain at night, monsters are more active. Ordinary people won't walk in the mountain at night, but that doesn't matter to Claw. The sun is setting, and it's getting darker. As he walks through the mountain, he defeats monsters that attack him with one punch. Ah, uh, Hicks. Gusu. He hears the sound of a person crying faintly. The cry sounds so faint that it would normally be missed, but Claw's ears could not miss it. From the echoes of the sound, he could tell the exact location. He rushes to where he hears the crying and finds a girl cowering in a tree hollow. Are you okay? Hicks, say I chan. A, fa, father-in-law. Ah, you, you, you won. Say I recognizes Claw and hugs his chest, and cries out loud. Crying out loud in the mountains at night can be fatal. Say I, who grew up in the village, should know that. But it seems that she doesn't care about that. Although he is confused, he gently pats Sayaya's back and tries to calm her down. Immediately a second later, he senses a pack of monsters coming towards them. Perhaps they heard Sayaya's cries. When he realizes, a pack of wolf-shaped monsters surrounds the two of them. Yeah, <laughs> Sayaya-chan, hide here. A hey, father-in-law. It's okay, I'll protect you. She gently pats Sayaya's head to calm her down. He immediately hides Sayaya behind him and faces the monsters. Come at me, monsters. My life is hard to take. Grrrr. The sun has set completely. Monsters' flesh and blood covered Claw's body. However, Claw is still breathing normally and watching his surroundings carefully. Is it over? Sayaya Chan, are you okay? Ye, yes. Somehow? Yeah? Ah. The moment she crawled out from behind, she saw Claw and fainted. That's not surprising. He is now covered with fresh blood and pieces of flesh. If a weak-minded woman sees him, she'll most likely faint. She must be tired, poor girl. But Claw is a little insensitive. Claw quickly headed to the village carrying the unconscious Sayaya in his arms. After running for dozens of minutes, the village finally came into view. They must have been worried that Claw was late to come home. Wheel and a few other villagers are gathered at the village entrance. Ah, dear. Wheel. Sorry I'm late. No. It's fine, as long as you get home safely. Oh, dear, you're bleeding. It's not my blood, no problem. More importantly, please take care of Sayaya chan A, eh? Sayaya chan Wheel's eyes widened when she saw Sayaya in Claw's arms. She looks worn out and skinny compared to when she left the village three years ago. I don't know why, but it seems she was stranded in the mountains. Hurry up, 
let's get to her parents' place. I understand. Wheel and the other villagers quickly take Say out to her house. The only people who stay behind are Claw and the village chief. Claw, why is Say uh, I don't know. I only found her by accident. Once I finish taking a bath and change my clothes, I'll go to Say Aya's house. I see. I'll go first. After parted ways with the village chief, Claw takes a bath in the river and change into clean clothes. He wanted to wash his clothes thoroughly, but he couldn't afford to do that. Doesn't have time for that. When he arrives at Say Aya's house, he sees that Say Aya is already awake. Wheel, Say Aya's parents, and the village chief are there, but somehow there is an atmosphere of sadness. Wheel also looks like she is about to cry. Say Aya, are you okay? Oh, father-in-law. Yes. Thank you for helping me. What are you talking about? You are Araka's fiancé. That means you're like a daughter to me. Araka? Ha, ha ha. That's only until today. What? He couldn't understand what Say Aya's words meant. As Claw tilts his head, the village chief stands awkwardly in front of him. Ah, uh, Claw, calm down, and listen carefully. A, hey. oh, okay. The village chief asks Claw to sit on a chair and slowly speak. Maybe he already heard the story from Say Aya's mouth, but the story was not something he could believe. Arka uses his position and authority as the hero to seduce many women. He drinks and eats successively. He is using the power he has gained recklessly. He never apologizes for any damage he causes to villages and cities. On the contrary, he demands unreasonable amounts of money as his reward for helping them. He also has surrounded himself with many pretty girls and kicked Sei out because he doesn't need her. Claw was listening to the village chief's explanation with an absent mind. On that day three years ago, Claw was really proud of his son. His son is a hero who saves the world. It was a great honor. Arka has become a womanizer and alcoholic. He has even dumped his fiancée, Say Aya. It is shameful. It's just too shameful. Claw stands up from his chair, kneels on the floor, and puts his hands and head on the floor. That's right. He is prostrating. Wheel is also kneeling down and prostrating next to him. Say Aya Chan, and everyone in your family. I apologize for all the pain my stupid son has caused you. We are very sorry. No, no. Claw San, Wheel San, please raise your heads. It's not your fault. Say Aya's parents lend their shoulders to Claw and Wheel and ask them to stand. With a pained look on her face, Say Aya smiles at them. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, I'm fine. So I'm. Ah, you. you. Say Aya starts crying again. Her parents hug Say Aya and rub her back. Actually, Claw and Wheel also want to hug Say Aya, but they don't have the right to do that anymore. Hey, Wheel. I've made a decision. What a coincidence. Me too. Claw and Wheel look at each other and nod their heads at the same time. Their stupid son's foolishness and the sin of hurting their daughter-in-law, they will never forgive him. Wait for us, stupid son. We'll come to beat you up. Even if he apologizes now, it's already too late. Yeah, uh, sure no Chichi C1, the hero's father. Apologize. A few weeks have passed since Claw and Wheel left their village. It would take several weeks to reach the capital from the westernmost village by carriage, but the two of them did not ride a carriage. They walked to the capital. The reason for this is, Hello, I am the hero's father. I am sorry for the trouble my stupid son has caused. I am the hero's mother. I'm really sorry for the trouble. Claw and Wheel bow to an old man. The old man is surprised by their words and wipes off his sweat awkwardly. Ah, are you the hero's parents? No. What are you talking about? You can curse me as you like. My stupid son has caused a lot of trouble in this village. Claw looks sideways at the village. No, maybe it should be called a village remains. There are ruins as far as they can see. No house is left standing. All the houses are shattered. That's right. The reason why they are traveling on foot is to help rebuild the villages that were destroyed by Arka's power. This is already the third time. But the two of them were going around sincerely apologizing for any damage, no matter how minor the damage might be. The old man is this village chief. He sadly looks at the two bowing down. No. The hero defeated the demon beast that attacked this village. The damages to the village were caused by the aftermath. For whatever reason, he hurt those he was supposed to protect as a hero. Our power is limited, but we hope it can be used to rebuild this village. Ah, uh, no. Luckily, none of the villagers were hurt. It's not about the body, 
It's about everyone's heart. Claw raises his head and looks over the village ruins with sad eyes. Every village has its own memories. Happy memories. Painful memories. Happy memories. Sad memories. No matter how similar we build the village, it will be a different village. The past memories have gone. I could only imagine the pain. In the hearts of the village chief and all the villagers, the village chief's eyes widened at Claw's words. Indeed, as he said, he feels as if there is a hole in his heart. In his mind, he was grateful that the hero had defeated the monsters, but his heart feels differently. The village chief was reminded by Claw's words. You are right. You are absolutely right. Then, please help us to rebuild this village. All right, we'll. Let's do it. Yes, dear. Claw picked up large pieces of scrap wood with one hand and put them in one place. After the scrap wood piled up the size of the house, Wheel placed her hand on the scrap wood, bind his things. Wood rope. A geometric design appeared on her palm. Numerous ivy-like things emerge from it and neatly bind the scrap wood. When the village chief sees this, his eyes widen, and his voice leaks. Oh my god, mistress, you can use magic? I can only use simple magic. You're so humble. Do you know how many people in this world can use magic? The village chief smiles bitterly at Will's shy smile. The ability to use magic depends on one's natural talent. The number of people who can use magic is far fewer than those who cannot. And most of them only can light a matchstick or create palm-sized water. There are not many people in this world who can use magic to put together such a large amount of scraps. The rope flies off Wheel's palm, and the geometric design, the magic circle disperses. Dear, it's ready. Thank you. Claw approaches the pile of scrap wood. The pile of scrap wood is so tall that even the big claw was to look up. In front of it, Claw grabs a piece of scrap wood in the pile. The village chief tilts his head when he sees that scene. Your husband uses magic too? No, my husband can't use magic. Eh? Then, well, just wait and see. Wheel smiles and looks at Claw. The village chief also turns his gaze from Wheel to Claw. After a few seconds, Claw's muscles begin to bulge. His blood vessels appear. Fum. Zzzz. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
They can't ignore the villagers' kindness. They gratefully put their hands together and drink the warm soup under the cold weather. Yash or no Chichi C2, the hero's father, help a little girl. A week has passed since they arrived in this village. They fight off incoming monsters, cut wood, and build houses. In one week, the houses were completed in the blink of an eye. The fence that surrounds the village is also sturdy and strong. It is not just pieces of wood strung together but big trees stabbed into the ground by Claw's strong arm and joined together by Wheel's magic. Thanks to the fence's completion, there is no need to worry about monsters or bandits. The villagers burst out in tears of joy. Not all the houses are completed yet, but they decided to move on because of the village chief's kindness. Then we are leaving now. Thank you so much for taking care of us. What are you talking about? You were the one who took care of us. No. This is my way of apologizing for my stupid son's actions. I only did what I had to do. Claw and Wheel once again bow to the villagers, but the villagers seem to be more cheerful than when they first arrived. Claw and Nikki. Please come again any time. We'll keep training until then. Nissan too. Please come again. Wheel and Nissan. Are you leaving now? You're always welcome here. Anisama. No. The villagers aren't just cheerful. The villagers are completely respecting them. The men are impressed by Claw's chivalrous spirit, while the women seem to be admired by Wheel's girl power. This was also happening in the other villages. They treat everyone like usual, so they don't understand why this is happening. Well then, goodbye. Somehow they got embarrassed and left the village quickly. The village chief said that it would take about two weeks to reach the capital on foot from here. Based on the information he got, there are no villages or cities that have been damaged by Arka's power in the meantime. So they can head straight to the capital. The village chief offered to travel by horse carriage, but they politely declined. If something happens, the carriage can't handle it. Fortunately, Claw's physical strength is limitless and Will can levitate in the air as long as her magic power remains. Even if her magic power ran out, there wouldn't be a problem because Claw would carry her, as Will levitate so long. She looks up at Claw and tilts her head. Is Arka in the capital? I don't know, but I'm sure he's using the royal capital as his base. We'll gather information there. Roma says that although he is based in the capital, he travels around to defeat the four heavenly kings of the Demon King's army. The good news that he has defeated the four heavenly kings has not come yet. In other words, is he still on his journey, or is he in the capital? Anyway, they're heading for the capital. That's the only thing they can do for now. They walk on the paved road. The sun is warm, and the birds are chirping. A gentle breeze caresses Wheel's cheeks mischievously, and butterflies fly around her. On such a peaceful journey, Wheel looks up at Claw happily and smiles. What's wrong? Nothing. When I think about it, it's been a long time since we traveled together like this. You're right. Claw scratches his cheek, remembering the past. He and Wheel first met, traveling together, and fell in love. Then Arka was born. Arka has strayed from the correct path. He wonders where and what mistake he made. Wheel hugs Claw's arm as he sighs softly, thinking about his stupid son. What? Are you embarrassed? I. I'm not embarrassed. There you go again. It's true. She didn't miss seeing Claw scratch his cheek again. It was her husband's habit to hide his embarrassment. After being together for almost 20 years, it is impossible not to see it. I'm happy. Regardless of the reason, I'm happy that I can travel with you. I see. Claw feels the same way. After Raka was born, Wheel wanted to travel, but she had to restrain herself for a long time. The purpose of the trip is to lecture Raka, but he is glad that Wheel is enjoying herself like this. It is going to be a long trip anyway. Then, it would be better for her to relax and enjoy herself. With that in mind, Claw gently holds Wheel's hand. My dear Fufu, I'm happy. Um, Wheel knows very well that Claw is clumsy. That's why this little affectionate gesture makes her feel so happy. The two of them walk along the paved road as if they are taking a stroll. But, exclamation mark. That piece is shattered. A loud roar echoed and shook the atmosphere. Claw and Wheel stop and look around carefully. This roaring, is that monsters? Most likely, but it can't be here. They look at each other. Then Wheel levitates higher and looks around. Wheel flies towards the source of the roar, and Claw follows her. They leave the paved road and cut through the forest. In ten seconds, you will encounter it. 
Okay. Claw gathers strength in his right arm and jumps out of the bushes without losing speed. There are two life forms there. One is a little girl. She is probably around 15 years old. She has rabbit ears on her head and a small round tail on her waist. Although there are only a few of them, there are humans who have animal physical abilities in their bodies. They are called demi humans. The other is a giant creature. Its scales are as hard as steel. Long, sharp claws, powerful fangs, fierce eyes, giant wings, and a thick whip like tail. Its body length is 5 meters maybe even more than 7 meters. It is precisely what Claw has expected to see after hearing the roar. It's the absolute king of predators in this world, the dragon. Right now, the dragon is opening its mouth to prey on the demi-human girl. He grasps the situation in 0.1 seconds. Claw turns his direction in a flash and swings his powerful right arm toward the dragon's face. Fum. Zugashua! Exclamation mark. The head was smashed into a million pieces. The fangs can bite through any creature, and the scales that are believed to be able to repel any attack. That dragon head was smashed to pieces by Claw's single punch. Are you okay? The demi-human girl drags her battered body and clings to Claw's leg. Please, help us, my village, please save everyone. She looks at Claw and speaks from the bottom of her heart. When Claw sees the girl's eyes, he takes her hand without even thinking for a moment. Sure. Leave it to me. Dot 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 thank yo. Perhaps from relief. The girl fainted. You're still very kind, dear. A man who doesn't respond to a request for help is not a man. He's a piece of shit. Let's treat her first. Wheel. Yes, dear. He left the girl with a wheel and turned away. A woman's care should be left to a woman. Help us. A bad feeling enveloped his chest, but Claw continued to be wary of his surroundings. If you like this series translation please help support the translation project. Thank you. Looper's sensei. Ya yeah. sure no chichi C3, dummy human little girl, begging for help. Mayan, run away. The last thing she saw in the burning village was her father surrounded by humans with weapons. The peace was destroyed. Her fellow tribes were being captured or killed. Her father, who is her only family, is also wounded by humans. She can't fight. All she can do is run away. Even though they are rabbit tribe, they look just like human beings. It is easy to imagine what they would do to her if they caught her. But, no, no way. I can't run away and leave Papa. Do what I say, Mayan. Hicks. For the first time in her life, she heard her father's angry voice. Mayan froze for a moment but then turned around and started to run. She's running away. Don't let that woman escape. We're going to sell her for a lot of money. She can hear the humans' vulgar laughter. The rabbit tribe has better ears than humans. The disgusting voices could be heard all the way, even after she had run so far away from her village. Sobs. Wait, Papa, everyone, I'll... I'll definitely get help. The rabbit tribe's leg speed is one of the fastest among demi humans. Mayan spent half a day on her way to the royal capital, where the humans live. The knights of the capital city will help them if they are in trouble. Her father had taught her that. So Mayan approached the knight guarding the gate. X, excuse me. He, help me, please help me. Rabbit tribe, what do you want? My village, my village was attacked by bandits. My village was burned. They killed and captured my people. The knight stayed silent throughout Mayan's words. He just stared at her, in silence, her voice gradually getting quieter. X, excuse me, rabbit girl, how long did it take you to run from that village to the capital? It's about half a day, if it takes half a day with the legs of a rabbit tribe. Even if we go with a carriage, it will take three days at the slowest, two days at the fastest, it would take at least four days to gather the knights, make preparations, and set out. In the meantime, I don't think those bandits who attacked your village will stay there forever. What are you trying to say? She did not want to hear it, but she had to hear it. The knight tells her the cruel words with a blank expression on his face. I'm sorry, but we can't afford to waste our precious resources on this! Exclamation mark. Mayan's blood rushed to her head, and she angrily grabbed the knight. But two knights standing nearby held Mayan down. Why? Papa told me. The knights here will help us if we are in trouble. Our knight order is on an important mission to destroy the demon king's army together with the hero. Please leave, but Mayan's voice doesn't move the knight. That, that's right. If, if you are a knight, there must be someone in charge here. Let me talk. 
Let me talk to him. The knight scratches his head and sighs troublesomely. I am the head gatekeepers of the Nervald capital. Albert Kingdom Knight. After that, she doesn't remember what happened. She rampaged, got attacked, and ran away. She doesn't know how far she went, but she kept running after dark and after dawn. Eventually, she got tired and sat down in the forest. She was too tired to move, and all she could think about was all the bad things that had happened to her. While she is doing this, her companions are being killed, captured, and sold. When she thought of that, she couldn't stop crying. Sobs. Papa. Everyone. Until yesterday, it was a peaceful day. Her father, who raised her with his own hands. Her close friends. Children who love her. Her fellow tribe who treated her well. All of them were destroyed in the blink of an eye. How long had she been sitting here? Unable to do anything, the word death slips through her mind. If I die, will I be able to see everyone? She puts her hand on her self-defense knife. The knife is made of monster fang and shines in the sunlight. If she thrust it into his throat, her life would be ended. That's what she thought at that moment. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. A deafening roar came above her head. It is a dragon. It stared at Mayan. Its eyes as beautiful and fierce as a glass ball as if it had recognized her as its prey. She was so distracted that she didn't notice the dragon's presence until it got this close. D. Dra. Gun. She reflexively pointed the knife at it, but immediately, she realized, it is impossible to run away from a dragon. This knife is useless. Besides, she was about to take her own life. There is no difference between slitting her throat with the knife or being eaten by a dragon. Then, let's just let nature's cycle take its course. Mayan closes her eyes and prepares to accept death. She is ready to accept her death. Ah, I don't want to die. A drop of tears flows down her cheek. Immediately after, fum. Zugashu. A. Hey, something came out of the bushes and smashed the dragon's head to pieces. It was a human. But big. Quite. No, very big. But strangely, she doesn't feel any fear. She doesn't know why. But she was relieved to see that big human being. While she was stunned, that man turned his straight and unwavering eyes on Mayan. Are you okay? Such warm words as she hasn't heard in a long time. Mayan clung to the man for no clear reason and squeezed her voice out from the bottom of her heart. Please, help us, my village, please save everyone. Mayan's soul screams. As if in response to her screams, the man immediately grabbed Mayan's hand. Sure. Leave it to me. Dot 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 dot. Thank yo. After hearing these words, Mayan's consciousness was lost. Ya yeah. ah sure no chichi C4, the hero's father, hurry. Ah. Exclamation mark dear, she's awake. Ah. About an hour later, the little girl opened her eyes and looked up at Claw and Wheel with blank eyes. Are you okay? Do you know where this is? The little girl nodded slowly at Wheel's question. Her wounds and stains are cleaned up by Wheel's magic but her mental fatigue seems to be greater. Finally, her thoughts caught up with her situation, and she rushed to get up. Ah, uh, um, Ito, please calm down, it's okay. Wheel holds the little girl's hand and gently strokes her head. The girl twitches her ears and nods her head down. I am Wheel, he is Claw, my husband. I'm Claw. I, I'm Mayan, as you can see, I am a rabbit tribe. The little girl, Mayan straightens her posture and prostrates herself deeply. Thank you, Claw Sama, for saving me from danger earlier. You must be a very famous hunter to kill a dragon with a single blow. Don't call me Sama. I'm just a woodcutter. Woodcutter? Are you joking? I'm not joking. No ordinary woodcutter could slay a dragon with a single blow. He did actually beat the dragon, but Claw denied her words. She clears her throat lightly thinking that any more words might sound rude. So, Mayan Chan, what do you mean when you ask me to help you? Oh, yes, that's right, Claw Sama, I beg you. Please help my village, save my fellow tribes. Mayan bows her head again. Of course, Claw had received this request once. There was no way he would refuse, but there is one question. I don't know if you're dealing with a monster or a mere human hunter, but if you ask the knights in the capital, I'm sure they'll put together a team to take them down, the knights have turned me down. Claw and Wheel's eyes widened at Mayan's words, Albert Kingdom's knights are supposed to protect their people and peace, especially in defeating the monsters, it was hard to believe that such a knight order would refuse a call for help from its citizens, the rabbit tribe, did they mention the reason? 
The knights are on a mission to destroy the Demon King's army together with the hero. So, an unexpected word came out from Mayan, the hero. In other words, Arca. The knight's most important mission indeed is to destroy the Demon King's army. The Demon King's army is composed of the Demon King, the four heavenly kings, and the demons created by the Demon King. To destroy the Demon King's army, the hero is a symbol for that. However, they never thought that the knights would refuse the call for help from their people because of this. This does not mean that Arka is to blame for all this. But, Mayan Chan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mayan San. The two couldn't help but apologize. What? What happened? Both of you. They explained everything to her, that they are the parents of Arka, the hero. The knights and the hero couldn't go to save Mayan's fellow tribe because of their mission to destroy the Demon King's army. They may not be directly related. Still, they wanted to apologize to Mayan. I see. The two of you are the hero's parents. Ah, it's not compensation, but we will definitely help Mayan Chan's fellow tribes. Yes, leave it to us. Wheel takes Mayan's hand, and Claw looks at her with intense eyes. Mayan also knows that it is not their fault, and he doesn't think the hero is bad either. It is all the fault of the humans who broke the peace and the humans who did not help. And all the blame is on the Demon Lord's army, the main cause behind all this. But somewhere in the back of her mind, she blames the hero. She understands the situation, but she can't control her heart and feelings. Mayan bites her lip and turns her head down. Then, once again, please help us. I understand. Let's hurry up then. Lead us the way. Yes, but first, we need to arrange a carriage. No. I'll run. You can run as fast as you can. I'll follow you. Eh? But. The speed of the rabbit tribe's legs is the fastest among demi humans. There is no way an ordinary human could run and keep up with them. But considering the power that smashed a dragon's head to pieces with a single punch, perhaps he could keep up with her. After thinking about it, Maya nodded. I understand. Then, I'll go as fast as I can. It should take about half a day to get there from here, so let's go. Mayan stands up and jumps lightly. Even though it was a light jump, he jumped higher than Claw's height. This way. Let's go. Mayan folds her knees and gathers her strength, then releases it all at once and runs through the forest as if she is flying. Not jump, but fly. She is as free as a bird. She ran forward as fast as she could. Maybe I was going too fast. If I run too fast like this, Claw Sama and Wheel Sama won't be able to. Perhaps she should slow down a little. She thinks so and looks back. What? Claw runs at the same speed as Mai and the rabbit drive with a cool face. Wheel is following alongside them, flying through the air. <laughs> What's wrong? You can go faster if you want. Yes, I'm worried about my fellow tribe. Let's hurry. So please, keep up with me. Mayan bet on her rabbit dried pride and increased her speed even more, as a result. Ha! There's a burned village around here? Indeed, there is a burnt smell. Mayan is the one who is sweating heavily and out of breath. Claw and Wheel look fine. They don't seem to be tired. Mayan's pride as a rabbit tribe is hurt a little bit. Ya yeah. sure no Chichi C5, the hero's father. Asking. After a short rest, Mayan regains her strength and leads them through the forest. The deeper they go into the forest, the thicker the burning smell gets. And then there is also the smell of blood. Besides, there is another strange smell. This is neither the smell of burning nor the smell of blood. It is a different, more unpleasant smell. Claw stopped and frowned. He remembers this smell. He had smelled it many times when he was traveling in the past. Dear, um, wheel. Mayan Chan. It is better not to see what comes next from here. I'll go alone. Eh? But. Mayan was puzzled by Claw's words. Certainly. This smell is unpleasant for Mayan, but not so much that it is unbearable. That's why she wants to go with him. It would be better if you two don't see the scene beyond this point. Claw insisted and would not budge. Seeing his straight A's, Mayan involuntarily backed away. Mayan Chan. Let's leave this to my husband. I understand. But please. If any of my fellow tribe is still alive, please help them. I know. Well then, we'll take care of Mayan Chan. Okay, take care, dear. Leaving Mayan with Wheel, Claw headed deeper into the forest. The smell intensifies as he walks. It had been a long time since he had smelled such a strong smell. Even for Claw, it made him feel sick. After a long walk, he finally reaches the wreckage of the village. Burned and destroyed houses. The corpses of the rabbit tribe lie everywhere. 
Most of the corpses had been killed so cruelly that it was almost unbearable to look at them. He walked around the village for a while and found that only one big house was left unburned. The unpleasant smell comes from this house. Claw frowns his eyebrows and opens the door. Just as I thought, five dead bodies of the rabbit tribe are lying there, and they are all young women. They must have been very beautiful when they were alive because they had been tortured to death that they can't be recognized anymore. This thick smell is the smell of men's sperm. To me humans, including the rabbit tribe, have higher endurance and vitality compared with human beings. They are raped and beaten for pleasure until they are in bad shape, but they are still kept alive and finally killed. Claw has seen such scenes many times before. This guy. Something is attached around the necks of the five rabbit tribe corpses. It is a collar, black and hard. On the surface are engraved patterns and mysterious letters. It can't be. This thing looked familiar. It brought back memories from the past. Suppressing the emotions that almost exploded, Claw left the building as quickly as possible. He then walked around the village, looking for survivors, but couldn't find any survivors. Suddenly. R? What? Did you survive? No. He's a human being. So big. Suddenly. Three human men appeared, they are wearing tattered equipment and smiling evilly. Are you guys who attacked this village? You don't have the right to talk, does that mean you guys did this? That's wrong. Jaihahaha people, his suppressed anger erupted, and he punched one of the men in the face, smashing him. It was a fist that could smash even a dragon's head. The armor worn by this man was as useless as paper. The other two stunned, but one of them takes out his sword and attack. Bastard, kill him. Claw kicks the other one in the abdomen, blows him up into the air, and explodes. The last remaining bandit is horrified seeing all that. A fist and a kick that smashed human bodies. He has never seen or heard of such a human being. Hey, you, answer my question. If you don't answer, I'll kill you. If you lie, I'll kill you. If you answer anything other than what I asked, I'll kill you! Exclamation mark. The man nods his head very fast, thinking he might be killed. If he disobeys Claw, he would be killed for sure. That is what his instincts as a bandit are telling him. First of all, are you guys slave traders? Yes, yes. To be precise, we are bandits hired by a slave trader. Slave traders, they are black market traders who capture humans and demir humans and sell them to aristocrats and high class people for high prices. Slave trading is prohibited all over the world. However, they are frequently bought and sold behind the scenes. It seems that these men are just bandits hired by a slave trader. How many bandits are there? F 50. That's quite a lot. Where is your hideout? Usually in a cave deep in the forest. But right now half of us are selling the Demir humans we've captured to Apu City. He then talks quickly to answers Claw's questions, perhaps because he is so scared of losing his life. Thanks to this, Claw learned more information about the bandits. This man seems to be just a low-level bandit and does not know anything about the slave trader, which is the most important thing. He said he came here just to play with the clean corpses. I see, so half of the bandits are in the cave? Yes, yes. That's all I know. I told you what I know, so I'm... R. That's right. Thanks. That's very helpful. He? He he. It's not a big deal. So, I'll be leaving now. Wait. Where do you think you're going? Claw grabs the man's face and lifts him lightly. Exclamation mark. His mouth and nose are blocked, and so he can't speak. His bloodshot eyes stare at Claw as if begging for mercy. But Claw just looks at the man with cold eyes. If you don't answer my questions, I'll kill you. If you lie, I will kill you. If you answer anything other than what I asked, I'll kill you. That's what I said, but I never said I would let you go home alive! Exclamation mark. You, think about what you guys have done so far. Did you really think you can go home alive? As the force is put into his hand, his fingers dig in and break the skull. Thick black blood flows from his eyes. The head was crushed into a crumpled mess. You have destroyed other people's ordinary lives, so don't even think you can live in peace. Yeah, ah sure no Chichi C6, the hero's mother, mourns. After confirming that there are no survivors, Claw goes straight back to Wheel and Mayan. Dear, welcome back. I'm back, Wheel. Wheel gives him a wet towel and wipes off the blood and dirt from his body. Wheel isn't surprised and acts as usual, but Mayan can't help but frown. But she immediately shakes her head and speaks to Claw. Well. Welcome back. So, 
close armor. Where are my fellow tribes? Ah, no one left alive in that village. No way, but maybe some of them still alive. The bandits who attacked your village are hired by a slave trader, is that true? Yeah, I found out from the bandits who are still in the village. Besides, some of the corpses had slave collars on them. Their eyes widened when they heard the word slave trader. Human trafficking is prohibited in this country. It is still fresh in their minds that the government has eradicated slave traders as well. Will looked at Kalor with a bitter expression on her face. Mayan is so shocked by the news that she looks desperate and slumps down. The slave collar is some kind of restraining device. The collar has magic mechanisms designed to cause extreme pain to the body. When its grip is tightened, it is a tool used to keep slaves from escaping. But the source of its production was also destroyed when the government destroyed the slave traders. All the collars should have been recovered and destroyed by the government. There are two possible reasons for it being there. First, the government is involved in the slave trade. This is impossible. Roma says that the current king hates such inhumane things so much that he would vomit in disgust. Second, this is the most likely reason. There is still a manufacturer of slave collars somewhere. This negative cycle will not stop until the slave traders and the collar production source are destroyed. Claw looked at the corpse of the female rabbit tribe that had been tortured to death earlier and gritted his teeth. Dear, I think it's better to move on from here now. Mayan Chan looks really depressed too. You're right, Mayan Chan. Can you stand up? Mayan is lost in thought, but she nods at Claw's words and slowly stands up, but her legs are not strong enough to walk. So we'll lent her shoulder to help her walk. Mayan Chan, can I ask you one thing? Ye, yes. If we leave this village as it is, monsters may come and steal the bodies of the victims. If that happens, the dead won't rest in peace. If it's all right with you, I think it would be better to burn this village. Claw's suggestion shook Mayan's heart. Certainly, monsters or beasts would come by if left alone. If that happened, the bodies of her people would be cruelly devoured. The elves who coexist with nature would leave it as if it is a natural thing, but as a survivor of the rabbit tribe, Mayan could not allow such a thing to happen. Please do that, please let my fellow tribe rest in peace. I understand. Wheel, I'll rely on you. Okay. Claw supports Mayan while Wheel extends her hand toward the village. High density magic concentrated in his hand, and a white magic circle appeared, to the drifting spirits, let it be a guide of light. Holy flare. After the chanting, countless white, pale, snow like flames appeared from the magic circle and descended throughout the village as if riding the wind. Then the pure white flames engulfed the entire village. Claw and Will clasp their hands together as they watch the scene. Mayan is stunned, but she follows their example and clasps her hands together. After a while, the pure white flames disappeared. The village, corpses, and everything else is gone. It becomes empty land. This should have purified the lost soul. Thank you, Wheel Sama. Now everyone, ah, you, you. As Mayan bows deeply, tears drop from her eyes and seep into the ground. Wheel looks at Mayan and gently hugs her. Okay, okay, everything will be fine. The slave trader have captured them, but your fellow tribes are still alive. We will definitely save them, so please stop crying. Okay? Ye, yes, I een. You are. Mayan cries loudly in Wheel's arms. With a smile like a holy mother, Wheel holds Mayan in her arms the entire time. I, I'm sorry, Wheel Sama. I have stained your dress. No, no, don't worry about it. After leaving the village, Mayan finally stopped crying. Wheel's clothes are stained with Mayan's tears and snot. Maybe feeling embarrassed for crying so hard, she blushed and bowed her head repeatedly. But, but that, really, don't worry about it. I can clean up this much with magic. Mayan lightly waves her index finger. A magic circle formed at Wheel's feet, spinning and passing through Wheel's body, leaving his clothes clean and spotless. See? Oh, wow. Magic is amazing. It really can do anything. Not everything can be done. Magic is a way to increase what you can do, but it's amazing. It's so cool. Mayan's eyes are sparkling. Magic is determined by talent. Not many people can use it. Depending on the environment, some people may never see it in their lives. Mayan had never seen any magic until she turned this age. I want to use magic too. Wheel Sama, please teach me. Well, that's. She looks at Claw with a troubled face. While half laughing, Claw speaks. Well, the first thing we should check is if she has any magic power, right? You're right. 
Let's check it out. Ye, yes. Please. Wheel goes around to Mayan's back and puts her hand between her shoulder blades. A few seconds later, Wheel's face turns slightly gloomy. This is Yahash or no Chichi C7, dummy human little girl, begging for teachings. How? How is it? A. R. Yes. I can feel a little magic power. If you train it, you might be able to use magic. Re. Really? Mayan's face lights up as she hears Wheel's words. Those who can use magic can feel potential magic power by channeling magic power to others. As Wheel said, Mayan feels a small amount of magic potential inside her. Mayan clasps her hands and opens them in disbelief. Seeing Mayan like that, Wheel makes an indescribable expression on her face. Wheel, are you okay? Dear. Yes, I'm okay. Wheel smiles bitterly and looks at Mayan. Mayan Chan. Do you really want to be able to use magic? A. Eh? Ye, yes, I want. If I were strong, I might have been able to help my fellow tribe. I want to do everything I can. The depths of her eyes waver mysteriously. Her eyes are not looking at Wheel, who is right in front of her. They seem to be looking at something much darker. These eyes. Both Claw and Wheel have seen it before. They are the eyes of an Avenger, filled with despair and rage. Wheel gently closes her eyes, smiles as gently as possible, and pats Mayan's head. Anew. Wheel Sama. I understand. I will teach you magic. Really? But I have some conditions. If you cannot keep these conditions, I cannot teach you magic. Ah. Uh, what? What is it? Wheel thought it would be unfair for her to ask for conditions after she agreed to it. But Mayan asked without complaining. 1. Magic isn't learned in a day. If you want to learn magic, you must become my student and train as hard as you can. I, I'm ready for that. 2. Even if you already can use magic, you are not allowed to use it without my permission until you are a full-fledged magician. Ah, uh, yes. 3. This is the most important thing. Wheel's eyes become serious, and she looks into Mayan's eyes. Mayan's eyes are filled with pressure, but she nods her head. Magic is meant to help people to protect people and makes people smile. Never use it as a tool of revenge. Oh. Tha. That's. Do you get it? Yes. Mayan nodded reluctantly, but she didn't seem satisfied. No wonder. There is a way to avenge her fellow tribe, but she is forbidden to do so. Wheel pats Mayan's head and speaks to advise her. It's okay. My husband will avenge your fellow tribe, and we will definitely save your fellow tribes who have been captured. Please believe us. MMM. Claw is doing a masculine pose behind Wheel. Mayan was a little taken back by his overwhelming physical beauty and firm muscles, but it is true that it might be better to ask a strong person like Claw to do it than a weak rabbit tribe like herself. It is better to take a reliable way than do it by herself. I understand. I'll rely on you. But please let me help too. Th. That's. This is rabbit tribe's problem. I can't leave everything to Claw Sama and Wheel Sama. Her eyes are not filled with darkness as they earlier but filled with fighting spirit and sincerity. Seeing those eyes, Claw put his hand on Wheel's shoulder. Well, Wheel, you don't have to be so strict about that. But, if she's going to be Wheel's student, there's a chance she's going to get into some trouble, if she considers it part of her training. There's nothing wrong with that, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Oh, thank you. Seeing Mayan bowing deeply. Wheel sighed softly. Geez, you are too kind. From my point of view, Wheel is kinder. It may sound cruel, but a teacher must be able to push her students into a lion's den. Some people are good at it. Some people aren't. Mugu. Claw looked away from Wheel's stare. He understands her point. But he was raised in that way too. Even if people think it's old-fashioned, he doesn't know any other way. Well, that's fine. I'm not going to cut corners in my training either. Of course, if you don't train well, then the death will come. The death will come. Mayan inwardly tilted her head at Claw's words. Claw notices her reaction and explains it to Mayan. When you build up your power improperly, you will misunderstand how much power you have. You will misjudge your own strength and your opponent's strength. That's why you must not cut corners in your training. I see. I understand. I'll be in your care from now on. Mayan bows deeply again. Because of that. They didn't notice the dark flames in Mayan's eyes. Yahash or no Chichi C8, the hero's father. Destroy. The three first headed to Apu City to rescue the rabbit tribe members. A bandit said that the bandit group has 50 members. Half of them are selling the captured rabbit tribe to Apu City. 
The other half may be at their hideout in the forest, but their top priority is to rescue those people right now. It takes two days to reach Apu City by horse. Most likely, the bandits have already arrived at the town by now. No matter how fast the three of them fly, it will take at least half a day. Half a day if they are unlucky, they might be sold, or even worse. Not knowing the safety of her fellow tribe makes her feel extremely anxious. Is everyone okay? They'll be fine. Wheel replies to Mayan's whispers as she runs. How do you know that? Slaves are all about quality. Aristocrats and merchants with money will buy them, and if they are badly injured, their price will drop. Men mainly for heavy manual labor, women mainly for service works. Their bodies are important assets for carrying out their duties, therefore, they will be fed properly and kept under strict control until they are sold. What happens after that depends on the person who buys them, so their safety is not guaranteed, but until they are sold, their safety is guaranteed. I see, so that's why, you know a lot. Well, I used to travel all over the world. Wheel recalls those days and smiles bitterly. Claw is listening but keeps running in silence. More importantly, you need to concentrate on controlling your magic power right now. Ye, yes. Wheel reminds Mayan, focusing her concentration on the magic that flows inside her. Normally, one cannot perceive the magic within him, herself unless one has a great sense. It is Wheel's job to make that possible. Wheel channels a little of her magic into Mayan's body and makes it run alongside Mayan's magic. By doing so, she can feel her own magic power. Currently, she can't do this without help but eventually she will be able to feel her own magic power. They continue to run for several hours. Suddenly, Claw's senses detected something. People's presence. A, eh? you're right. A dozen kilometers away. It's heading this way. A, eh? their words made Mayan confused. As a member of the rabbit tribe, Mayan is also good at sensing the enemy's presence, but she could not feel any sign of people until Claw and Wheel mentioned it. No, even now, she can't feel any presence. Can a human being detect a presence a dozen kilometers away? No, no, there is no way. No matter how great the two of them are, they are still human beings. They must be mistaken. That's what she thought. They're impossible. Certainly, they are there. More than twenty people in number. They are riding horses and carriages, and all of them are armed. As they get closer, Mayan can sense their presence. And yet, the two had sensed their presence from a very long distance. This made Mayan a bit disheartened. Bandits, they must be on their way back from selling the rabbit tribe, we'll crush them first. Wheel. Okay, Wheel jumps up in the air and raises her palm. Stone wall. Immediately after, a ten meter high stone wall appeared in front of the bandits path and further surrounded them on all sides. The sudden appearance of the stone wall made the bandits panic and lose control. Then, Claw jumps over the wall and lands in the center of the bandits. Who's Pego? What the Kai? Hika Chabo. Claw's arm swings slightly, and the bandit's limbs blow off, their head shatters, and their torso explodes. Exclamation mark. Hey, guys. What are you guys doing? Kill him. Kill him. Oh. Ooh. The bandits were stunned by what had happened, but their bodies finally moved when they heard their leader's voice, but Claw's advance did not stop. A few minutes passed. All the bandits were turned into pieces of meat. The bandit leader is the only one left. Wah, R, A, his comrades were just with him a while ago. They got quite a lot of money and were excited about how they were going to spend it. And yet, now he is the only one surviving in this place. His lower back is shaking so badly that he can't stand up. Then the big man who brought death stands in front of him. That man cracks, made sound, his own neck joint. Just answer my questions. The bandit lead nods to that indescribable pressure. Ya yeah, sure no Chichi C9, the hero's father, facial recognition pass through. It seems they have already been sold. Claw returns after speaking in physical language with the man who acts as the leader. He holds a bag full of Albert Kingdom gold coins in his hand. There are hundreds of coins. Since Claw's annual income is one gold coin, that means he got hundreds of years worth of earnings. This money is made from human trafficking. His anger is boiling and getting stronger. He suppresses his emotions and hands the bag to Mayan, who looks down with a sad expression on her face. Mayan Chan, as I said before, those caught as slaves are guaranteed their safety until they are sold at auction. If we want to rescue them, we must go there. Yes, I will not give up. Mayan wipes away her tears, which are about to fall. 
and pulls herself together. Crying here will not bring her comrades back. If she has time to cry, she must take action, even just a little. Seeing the determination in her eyes, Claw nodded slowly. That's good. You're a strong child. Tha, thank you. Suddenly being praised made her embarrassed. But she turned her head down for another reason this time. Claw tilts his head at Mayan's change. But this is not the time for that. He takes the horse out of the stone wall, removes all of their equipment, and releases them into the wild. All right, Wheel. Please take care of the rest. I understand. Wheel puts her hand on the stone wall. The stone wall crumbles and sinks deep into the earth engulfing the pieces of flesh. And finally, there is nothing but an empty space. I buried them pretty deep, so no wild beasts or monsters will dig them up. Thank you, Wheel. At this point, Apu City is only a short distance away. As the three of them ran toward the city, Apu's gate finally came into view. The village where Clor and the others live is surrounded by a wooden fence and gate. But Apu City is protected by a thick and high wall made of stone blocks and a massive gate that cannot be moved by one person. Apu is one of the biggest cities in Albert Kingdom and is known as a city where various things gather from all over the country. Even now, merchants are lining up to pass through the checkpoint. To enter Apu, we must pass through a checkpoint. Apart from the merchants, there are separate checkpoints for travelers and tourists. Klausama, where do we go through? Good question. We'll go in through the other entrance. This way, Claw left the line and headed for the guard post, not the checkpoint. A guard is yawning as he stands at the guard post's entrance. But when he sees Claw, the guard straightens his back and salutes him. R. Mr. and Mrs. Claw. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your hard work. I'm sorry. I need to get inside as soon as possible. Can we have your permission? Oh, of course. Please, come through. Thank you. With the nervous guards saluting them, the three walked past the guard post and entered Apu's city. Mayan's eyes widened at such a difference in treatment. No wonder, Mayan had been to Apu several times before to help with work, but she remembers that the procedures were troublesome and she had to wait for a long time. Wheel sees Mayan's reaction and smiles. If you ask why, it's his face. What? What with his face? Yes. To put it simply, my husband is a hero in this city. A hero? She had only heard of heroes in fairy tales. Mayan is shocked as if she had been hit on the head by two names she had never thought of. The hero Zeno stopped an army of thousands of demon beasts with one sword. The hero Michelle used her magic to cleanse the plague of death. The hero Kaylee led an elite army to overrun the demon king's army. All of them are incredible achievements. Those who accomplish great achievements are called heroes and are passed down to future generations. But thinking back, Claw killed a dragon with a single punch. No wonder he is called a hero. What achievement did Claw Sama do? This stone wall done. A. Eh? More than twenty years ago, he cut out the stone all by himself and built a stone wall around the city in one night. Ha! Huh? She couldn't believe her ears. No. No one would believe it. He built this huge stone wall in just one night, all by himself. It's an achievement, but it's just too crazy. More than twenty years ago, Apu was not a city but a village. To develop it from a village to a town, the aristocrat who ruled the village at that time asked my husband to build it. He asked my husband to use his power to build a stone wall as quickly as possible, and he did that overnight. Yes, it's too crazy. It's more than an achievement. Claw is less than 40 years old now. More than 20 years ago, he was still a teenager, younger than Mayan now. Claw Sama. Who the hell is he? Mayan's wonder grew even more. Dash. If you like my translation, then please support the translation project. Any donation is greatly appreciated. Ya yeah, Asho no Chichi C10, the hero's father, audience. Ooh, Mr. Claw. Mr. We got some good veggies today. Claw San. You look great today. Uncle, let's play. As Claw walks down the street, more and more people call out to him. Everyone looks cheerful and seems to trust Claw from the bottom of their hearts. While staring at Claw's back, Mayan speaks to Wheel. Claw Sama is very popular, isn't he? Because he comes here once a month to sell wood. It seems that when he stays overnight, he helps people in this city. Surely with his great body and strength. He can help people do various things. Somehow, Mayan is convinced of this. They proceed down the main street while greeting everyone one by one. 
Perhaps everyone knows him because everyone greets him. Where are we going? I don't know, but it's my husband. I'm sure he knows where we should go. Wheel trusts Claw completely, and she continues to follow him with a smile on her face. Mayan is worried about how they can help their friends with such a carefree attitude. But for now, she has no choice but to trust them and follow them. After walking for about an hour, a huge mansion comes into their view. This, this is, it's the feudal lord's house. The feudal lord, a nobleman? Yes. Shall we go? Shall we go? What do you mean? Claw and Wheel talk to the guards. Immediately, the iron door opens, and they are allowed to enter. Mayan's thoughts and body stiffened at the thought of being able to meet with a nobleman so easily. Here a claw armor. You're too amazing. Mayan Chan. Ah, yes, I'm coming. She hurriedly follows them. The guards greet the three with a salute, and the iron door closes loudly. And an old man is waiting for them in the garden. A maid is standing by his side and bows her head respectfully. Claw, long time no see. Long time no see, Lord Gordo. You look well. Gahahaha. Well, I won't let the young ones win yet. The old man speaks to them in a friendly manner. When Mayan hears the name of Gardo, she straightens her back. He is Count Gardo Rosa, ruler of Apu City and the surrounding area. He is a real nobleman. Gardo Sama, long time no see. Wheel Dono is as beautiful as ever. I wish you would tell me the secret of your youth. Gahahaha. Mayan blinked at Gardo's attitude as he spoke with them. Knowing that he is a nobleman, he thought he would be more arrogant, but it is quite the opposite. He is friendly and speaks with claw and wheel as if he is talking to an old friend. Gardo laughs for a moment and then notices Mayan behind them. Is that girl a rabbit tribe? Yes, I'm Mayan, a rabbit tribe. N nice to meet you, Rosa Sama. My, my name is Mayan. Her words end awkwardly because she is so nervous. Gardo grins and taps Mayan's shoulder strongly. Gahahaha. No need to be so nervous. If you're Claw's friend, then you're my friend too. Ye, yes. Maybe this is what they call putting aside rank. Somehow she feels a little relaxed, but Mayan does not trust that words. Nobles and commoners are as different as heaven and earth. Everyone should already know that. So, Claw, what's up today? Would you like to have dinner together? No. Actually, there is an urgent thing. Who? Urgent thing? Yes. Actually, Claw told Gardo what had happened so far. His smile that he had shown earlier disappeared and turned into an anger filled face. Is that true? Most likely. It's not good here. Let's go inside. Gardo pushes Claw's back and asks him to go inside. The three quickly enter the mansion together with Gardo. Gardo sits back in his chair and holds his head. He has ruled this city for decades. He had never heard such information, but he doesn't think that what Claw is saying is a lie. He has known Claw for a long time. Gardo knows very well that he is not the kind of person who would lie about something like this. Assuming that's true, how do they get them in? On the way here, I interrogated the bandits. Apparently, there is an underground tunnel that connects the outside to the inside. The nobles who participate in the slave auction also come in through that tunnel. Illegal things are happening in the city he rules. Gardo let out a deep breath. Lord Gardo, let me ask you. You are not involved in this matter, are you? Of course not. Their eyes cross each other. After a few seconds, they both smile. It looks like you're not lying. Yeah, you know how much I hate illegal things. Their relationship is not shallow. He knows Gardo won't let illegal things happen in his territory. Gardo drinks his tea and calms himself down. Why did they choose the city? This is just my speculation. But this city is located at the edge of the country. This city has access to various supplies and transportation. And most importantly, it's not far from regions where the demi human population lives. Claw is right. This place is on the edge of Albert Kingdom and is blessed with good supplies and transportation. It is speculation, but what he says is true. Gardo slams his glass on the floor with a face full of rage and hits the desk. How dare they look down on me? I will eradicate them for sure. Claw. Yes, that's the reason I came here, to crush the slave auctions and destroy the slave traders. The two men shake hands strongly and turn their murderous intent toward the enemy they have not yet seen. Dash. If you like my translation, then please support the translation project. Any donation is greatly appreciated. Ya yeah, or no Chichi C11, the hero. No. Albert Kingdom, Royal Capital Nerveld.
in the center of Nervald, the royal capital. This is where many important people, nobles, and wealthy merchants live. In the middle of the city, there is a luxurious and huge mansion. A circular iron fence surrounds it. It has a spacious garden and a big overwhelming mansion. This is the mansion where the hero Arca lives. The mansion is luxuriously decorated, and the floor is covered with a soft red carpet. The maids with very revealing outfits are working around the house. One of the maids is heading to a certain place. She is wearing a classical maid's uniform and walks gracefully to the innermost part of the mansion. She knocks on the door and calls out to the person inside, Hero Sama. May I come in? Yeah, it's okay, excuse me. She opens the door and enters. The dimly lit room is filled with a lewd smell that makes people frown. A dozen women are lying on the bed in the center of the room, naked and moaning seductively. A sweaty man sits on the edge of the bed beside these women and drinks from a bottle. Oh, Sarah, Hero Sama, excuse me for disturbing you when you're tired. I'm not tired, I can still go on. As expected of you, sir, but the maid. Sarah's expression doesn't change. Arka doesn't like it, so he approaches Sarah and grabs her huge breasts above her maid's uniform. She is being roughly fondled, but Sarah's face remains expressionless. This woman is like a doll. He thinks so and slowly lifts her skirt. You're next. Keep your ass facing me. Certainly. But first, I have to report something. That can wait. But, Hero Sama. This involves your family. Suddenly, Arka's hand stopped. Not only that, his face that had been smiling arrogantly, now stiffened. Family? Yes. My family? Yes. Instantly, a picture of a huge back ran through Arka's mind. Tall enough to look up at. Firm muscles. The power to smash everything with a single blow. It is his father, Claw. Hey, why is dad, my dad? For the past few weeks, we have received information that two people claiming to be the father and mother of the hero have been traveling throughout the country. They are going around villages and towns damaged by the hero when fighting the monsters and helping to rebuild them. He could not believe his ears when Sailor, Sarah, said that. Until now, Arka had been working to defeat demons, demonic beasts, and the demon king's army. His ultimate goal is the demon king, but he is told that he is free to do as he pleases until then. That's why he's living a luxurious life like this. While Arka is confused, Sarah continues her story. They are currently staying in Apu City. What shall we do? Those insolent people pretend to be the hero's parents. Shall I go and kill them? What? Wait, wait. If they really are my father and mother, Sarah would be the one killed for sure. I am still a former top-ranked adventurer. I'm sure I won't lose. Their level is far beyond your imagination. Recalling the past, Arka's body trembles. No, wait. Maybe they're just swindlers. Do they have any distinguishing features? Based on the information we have, the man is over two meters tall. Apparently, he's quite muscular. Over two meters tall and muscular. There are many such men in this country. He wants more specific information. Anything else? His strength or something? It's fake news. But, just tell me. There is a report that man killed a dragon with a single punch. That's my dad. That made him sure. He is two meters tall and muscular. And there is only one person he knows who can kill a dragon with a single blow. His own father, Claw. That means that the person traveling with him is his mother, Wheel. Why my parents are. This is not certain either. But there is another piece of information. Say it. Maybe they are worried about him and come to see him. Such faint hope is. He says he's going to beat up his son. Crumbling instantly. And he has to prepare to die. Yeah, Ash or no Chichi C12. The hero's father. Out of standard. Albert Kingdom, Apu City. Claw and the others left the Rosa Mansion and explored the area around Apu. Claw's presence detection, wheels detection magic, and Mayan's hearing senses are used to search for suspicious places. Gardo is waiting for them at the mansion to secure the liberated slaves, but after an hour of searching, they still haven't found any clues. According to the bandits, a magic spell keeps the place unrecognizable, so they can't reveal its detailed location. Wheel. How's on your side? There are signs of magic, but it is cleverly concealed. I can't pinpoint the exact location. I, I can hear sounds in this area with my hearing, but my senses are clouded by the recognition blocking magic. Wheel's magic detection is top class. He has been with her for many years. 
so he knows it very well. The rabbit people's hearing sense accuracy is also top class among demi humans. If these two cannot grasp the exact location, it means their opponent must also be very good at magic. Claw crosses his arms, thinking, then kneels down and puts his hands on the ground. He is muttering something, but it is so small that even Mayan's ears can't hear it. Claw Sama, what in the world are you? SHH. Mayan, let's be a little quiet now. Ye, yes. The two silently take a distance from Claw. After waiting for Claw for a while, he suddenly stands up and turns around. I found it. Certainly. There is a cave. Really? Then, let's go. Okay. This way. Claw leads the way, followed by Wheel. Mayan also quickly follows them, but she does not understand their conversation just now. We. Wheel Sama. What did Claw Sama do? Mayan. Have you ever heard of something called Sonar? Yes. It's used by the bat type monster. Isn't it? Simply put. It uses ultrasonic waves and uses their reflections to detect things. By doing so, the location of invisible objects can be accurately detected. But just now, Claw was just holding his hands on the ground. He didn't seem to be channeling his magic power or emitting ultrasonic waves like a bat. Then why? Wheel answers that question smoothly. My husband used his voice instead of sonar. I don't understand what you're saying. He puts his palms on the ground and emits his voice. He feels its echo, and it does the same thing as sonar. The explanation made no sense to her. All she understands is that Claw is an outrageous person. Recognition blocking magic requires setting up various rules. Signs detection, magic detection, hearing detection, visual detection smell detection. The more complex the rules, the more difficult the magic to handle. But if one can control everything, then it's the most troublesome magic to face against. I, I see. He knew this. So he exploited the blind spot in recognition blocking magic, which is touch detection. Ah, finally, she understands. That was the reason Claw was putting his hands on the ground. Detecting by voice reflection is not something that normally comes to mind. That is why it is a blind spot, creating an opening. It's outrageous. When I first heard the principle, I thought the same thing. I thought this person's existence was extraordinary. No, he's outrageous. Indeed. She has never seen people whose existence is so outrageous. She wonders if he is really a human being. To be honest, she doubts that. Perhaps he heard what they are talking about. Claw sighs softly. You two realize you're being rude? Oh my. I'm just telling the truth. I'm a real human being. I can only do things that are within human physical abilities. There is no one else who can do this in the first place. But Mayan gulped that word down. They follow Claw for a few minutes. At a certain place, Claw stopped. There is nothing when they look around. It is just a forest. Dear. Is this the place? Yeah. Wheel. Okay. Wheel puts her finger on a giant tree in front of them. Immediately after, the tree shakes with a sound, and a door appears in the center of the tree. Bingo. This is the entrance, on top of recognition blocking magic. There's also concealment magic. Those who know they are doing bad things are very good at hiding. Claw puts his hand on the door, but it doesn't move at all. Maybe it is locked. The door is locked with a spell that stops it from opening if anyone other than authorized persons touch it. Impudent. He sighs softly and puts in a slight effort, and then, crunch. The door broke off completely from the tree. It's open. No, no, no. Claw Sama, that's not open. That's broken. She had tried to keep quiet, but she had reached her limit. He breaks magic with his arm strength. Is such a thing even possible? Well, the road is open. Don't worry about the details. Let's move on. That's right. Come on, Mayan Chan. If you say so, Mayan gave up and stopped thinking. Dash. If you like my translation, then please support the translation project. Become a patron, monthly donation. Become a patron, joint donation, one time donation. Any donation is greatly appreciated. Ya yeah, no Chichi C13, the hero's father. Attack. A staircase stretches down to the ground when they pass through the door. There are no torches or lights, but it is bright. The stairs are constructed for easy descent and even have handrails. They are definitely man-made. Mayan peeks through the door and nervously gulps down her spit. It. It's kind of scary. Certainly, I have a bad feeling about this. There is a negative atmosphere coming through. Wheel is also on her guard, looking at the end of the staircase. Even for Claw and Wheel. 
This is the first time they feel such an intense negative atmosphere. I'll go first. Mayan Chan will be in the middle. Wheel. You cover our backs. Okay. Ye. Yes. Slowly. They walk down the stairs. As they walk down the stairs, the more intense the negative atmosphere grows. No matter how long they feel this atmosphere, they cannot get used to it. Mayan frowns and holds her nose. Perhaps she can't stand the smell. Mayan Chan, are you okay? Fizz, you don't look okay. If it is just the smell, I can block it. Please wait. Wheel snaps her fingers, and Mayan's body is enveloped in a pale light. Perhaps it is a spell to block out unpleasant smells. She doesn't smell it anymore. Ah, thank you, Wheel Sama. No, no. Rabbit tribe has five senses that are sharper than humans. That's right. But it makes me anxious when my sense of smell is blocked. The five senses of the rabbit people are sharper than humans, and Mayan's sense of smell is especially sharp among the rabbit tribe. Thanks to her sense of smell, she has escaped from danger many times in the past. One of the senses that she relies on is being blocked. It is impossible for her not to feel anxious. Wheel gently pats Mayan's head. You'll be fine. My husband and I are here. We won't let anyone touch Mayan Chan. Thanks. Thank you very much. She knows how strong the two are. So there is no need to worry, but she can't ask them to protect her forever. She would not let her friends be killed or kidnapped if she was stronger. She hates her weakness. That's fine. Suddenly, Claw said a meaningful word. Wah. What do you mean? Don't forget that feeling. But don't let it consume you. Tame it. She doesn't understand what Claw means. The emotion that Mayan is feeling right now is extremely negative. Don't forget that. Don't let it consume you. Tame it. With a puzzled look on her face, she asks Wheel for help. But Wheel only smiles meaningfully and does not answer her. Dot. I don't get it. She sighs softly, changes her mind, and continues walking down the stairs. After walking down the stairs for a while, the stairs turn into a corridor at a certain point. It is barely wide enough for adults to pass each other, but the ceiling is high. Though it looks too narrow for Claw, he has no difficulty moving through it. Many doors are lining the walls of the corridors and intersections. Leave the route to my detection. I, I will help you with my hearing sense too. Thank you. Wheel. Mayan Chan. Wheel raises her hand, and Mayan listens carefully to check their route. Then their eyebrows twitch together. There are traps everywhere. The traps are set in such a way that if we don't follow the correct route, they will be triggered. And there are a lot of people waiting for us. A hundred or two hundred. I can't tell precisely. It seems they lured us here and made it impossible for us to escape. But. Their thinking is too naive. Claw walks forward. He walks lightly as if he has nothing to worry about. Dear, that door. Okay. He opens the door just as Wheel told him to. Die are. The next moment, a big man behind that door swings his axe down at Claw. Yo! Claw swings his fist toward the axe as it is swung down. Immediately after, the axe shattered into pieces. Dot he? Agya. He grabs the stunned big man's head and lifts him lightly with one hand. The man weighs probably more than 100 kilograms. Claw shakes the big man in his grip and swings him around. HMPH. He threw it toward the end of the corridor. The big man is thrown at super high speed, like a giant cannonball, crushing the people at the end of the corridor into pieces of flesh. Wa, wait G, Jaya, Becky, Pope, probably around 50 people, all the enemies in the corridor were reduced to pieces of flesh. Finally, the big man also crashed into the wall and exploded. Okay, nice ball. Geez, I won't say anything. Ya, yeah, Ash or no Chichi C14. The hero's parents. Get a little serious. Claw's advance does not stop. They follow Wheel's instructions and continue walking down the correct path, completely destroying the enemies that awaits them. Finally, they arrived at a carved steel door. Realistic faces of devils and skulls are staring at them. Dear. Yes. This is the place. Both of them looked tense. Mayan gulps her saliva and asks nervously. Ah, uh, um. What's ahead of us? The one who manages the slaves. This is the headquarters of the slave traders. A. Eh? The bandits are hired by the slave traders. The devil is the slave trader, while the skulls represent the slaves. This is like a symbol of the slave traders. And this is their headquarter. After finishing his explanation, Claw puts his hand on the door. As expected. This door is also locked by magic. And the surrounding area is also made of steel. So it would be impossible to break it like before. 
It's hard. Both of you, stay away. Okay, Mayan Chan. Yi, yes. After making sure they are far enough, Claw rolls his shoulders. It's been a while since I did this. All right. Croat clenches his fist. The atmosphere around Claw is gradually distorted, maybe because of his fighting spirit. It is similar to shimmering flames, where the surroundings are distorted by the heat. After a few moments of gathering power, he thrust his fist toward the steel door. Fum. Goskoa. Jaya. With an explosion sound, the steel door shattered into pieces. Its pieces turned the bodies of the slave traders and bandits waiting behind it into beehives. Once they get inside, it seems that there are still many bandits left. They are all armed, but their eyes are filled with fear. What was that? Close armor. Was it like a special move? Yeah. Special move. 30% punch. By the way, the one that killed the dragon was special move 50% punch. I see. Once again, she is reminded that common sense does not apply to Claw. Now. Wheel. Can I leave this place to you? Okay, leave it to me. Then, Mayan Chan, let's hurry up. Mayan's fellow tribes are ahead of us. Oh, okay. Claw and Mayan run to the back and pass the frightened slave traders. Wheel. Now, shall I do my part? Wheel turns around and smiles like an angel. Perhaps they are relieved that the source of their fear is gone. The slave traders turn their vulgar smiles to Wheel. Hi, hi he. If that monster isn't here. It will be easy, and she's a great beauty, too. I'm going to catch and rape you. I'll rape you to death. Maybe there are a hundred of them. In front of these men, Will puts her hand on her cheek as if she is troubled. Ara Ara. You're troublesome people. Do you think I am weak? Will's eyes squinted. The next moment, the slave trader's instincts see a vision of something. A strange figure is standing behind Will. Something more brutal than the demons, crueler than the devils. They instinctively sensed it. But they couldn't move a step. Foo -fa -foo. In the old days, bad guys used to tremble just by seeing me. The flow of time is cruel. To think some people don't know about me. Wheel snaps her fingers. Immediately after, something like black boiling magma erupts from beneath Wheel's feet. From there, countless tentacles appear in a blink of an eye. Jet black tentacles slowly crawl on the ground and extend toward the traders. What? What the hell is this? Ma, magic? I've never seen this. He, he, help. The tentacles catch the fleeing traders and drag them into the black magma. Until all the traders are dragged down, Wheel only smiles like an angel. Ya, yeah, ah sure no chichi C-15, dummy human little girl. Reunite. Claw, Mayan. They ignore the cries of despair behind them and proceed further in. Each time they hear a scream, Mayan flops down on her ears. Claw is used to it, but these desperate cries would break any ordinary person's nerves. Actually, Mayan is almost fainting now. Mayan Chan, are you okay? Yes, yes. Somehow, well, if you're going to learn magic from Wheel, you'd better get used to this level of desperate screaming. Hi. This level. This means that worse things await her in the future. It is no use crying over spilled milk. It is important to know when to give up in life. Mayan quietly killed her feeling. Then, Claw stops in front of an iron door and gently touches it with his fingers. Just after this, here, here's where my comrades are. Yes, Claw grips his fingers into the iron door and lightly tears it open from side to side. A dazzling light leaked out from the end of the torn iron door. What? What the hell is? I heard that door can never be opened. It's more like it is pried open. Confused voices can be heard inside, and Claw slowly walks through the gap. Looks like. Besides the demi-humans, there are also young human men and women imprisoned. They all have slave collars attached to them and are chained to the walls. The imprisoned people get noisy when they see the big muscular claw looking at them. So, so big. Giant tribe. No, he is a bit short for a giant tribe but still big. Who are you? Is he working for the slave traders? The frightened people cower to avoid eye contact. Among them, only one rabbit tribe is looking at claw. No, not Claw. That rabbit tribe is looking at Mayan, who is standing behind him. Mayan. Mayan's ear twitches when the voice reaches her. She recognizes that voice. It is her only family member who raised her by himself. Her beloved father, who she thought had died. Various emotions erupt all at once, and Mayan runs past Claw. Papa. Mayan. A rabbit tribe man hugs Mayan, who jumps on him. Apparently, this man is Mayan's father. He looks like Mayan. And he has the same blue hair color. Papa, thank God. 
I'm really glad. I'm sorry, Mayan. I made you worry. You, you, you. Mayan cries on her father's chest. Claw silently looks at him. Hey, Mayan Chan is alive. Thank God. Thank God. Our village was attacked. But we can only hope that one of our people survived. The rabbit tribe people express their relief. Claw knows how terrible the situation in the village was, but it's better not to mention that now. With that thought in mind, he stays silent for now. Papa, I'm so sorry. It's because I... I'm too weak. No, it's okay. I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have pushed you away. It's okay. I know you had to do that back then. Mayan and Mayan's father cry because they have reunited, but they are still in their enemy's territory. They can't stay immersed in their emotions forever. Excuse me. You are Mayan's father, right? Dot ye. Yes. My name is Alan. Excuse me. Who are you? I'm sorry, but we don't have time for this now. We have to get everyone out of here. Out. Out of here. Everyone here is buzzed at Claw's words. They can't believe the words they just heard. Ha. Ha. The number of enemies here is far too many. More than a hundred people are being held here. It's impossible to escape. Don't worry. The enemies outside have been neutralized by my wife. Wife. Neutralized? Alan tilts his head. He doesn't understand what Claw is saying. Of course, you wouldn't understand. Mayan thought so. But she swallowed that words. Claw Sama. First we must do something about the slave collars. That's right. Mayan Chan, stay away. Eh? Oh, okay. Mayan moves away from Alan, and Claw approaches him. Alan is inwardly intimidated by Claw's size, but he tries to stay calm because he doesn't want to look bad in front of his daughter. I'm going to remove the collar now. Please turn your head up a little. Do you have the key? If you try to remove it by force, it causes extreme pain to the person wearing it. It's okay. Trust me. I understand. Her beloved daughter trusts him. Then, he has no reason not to trust him. Alan prepares himself and raises his head slightly. The collar made of thick steel reflects the light and glints faintly. While everyone around him watches and holds their breath, Claw inserts his finger into the collar and neck gap. Fem. Crunch. Alan's collar is torn off in a flash before he can even feel the extreme pain. Ha! Huh? They have no idea how that could happen. They couldn't believe what they saw. The collar's thickness is more than five centimeters. That thick hunk of metal was torn off in an instant. It's all right now. I'll tear off everyone's collars. Ito. Eh? I'll go around all of you one by one, so everyone. Immediately after. Ark. Ga. Ar. Ark. Kawa. Arga. Hijah. Suddenly screams come from everywhere, and people fall to the ground. Their collars are glowing a dark purple. This is a sign that the mechanism linked to the collars is working. This means. Oi 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 Tilda. I thought I heard the goods getting noisy. What does this mean? Someone with the controller is coming. When they turn toward the voice, they see a man walking lightly. He is wearing a luxurious looking suit and a silk hat. He holds a walking stick in his left hand and a black device in his right hand. The man looks at Claw with eyes like glass balls. He shows a smile filled with hatred toward anything in this world. Ya yeah, Asho no Chichi C16, the hero's father, smash. Nice to meet you. I'm Leto. I'm the chairman of Leto Company and the auction's owner. The man who introduced himself as Leto takes off his silk hat and bows. His politeness does not hide his ugly-looking personality. In his words and gestures, one can sense that he is making fun of people. The moment they see Leto, those who were hopeful earlier tremble with fear. Claw looks at Leto while the people who fell silent face down. Are you the head of the slave traders? Slave traders? Gosh, what are you talking about? I'm just a merchant. Don't try to fool me. You're catching these people and trying to sell them. They are still frightened and do not want to look at Leto. The device in his hand seems to make them suffer extreme pain. Alan's collar has been removed, but he is also face down and sweating heavily. Leto strokes his beard and turns up the corners of his mouth like a crescent moon. People, people, people. Are there any people here? Everything here is goods. Pets to be sold to the rich and the nobles. You can break them, rape them, and kill them as you please. They are nothing but goods. He is so disgusted by Leto's behavior. Claw clenches his fist and is about to run toward Leto, but he go. It's hurt, 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 ah, danger, danger. He heard painful cries from behind him. He looks back and sees that the slave's collars are glowing faintly. It seems that the collar's power is activated by the device in Leto's hand. I've seen your power. 
It looks like you are very proud of your power, but that only works in close range. If I stay away, there is nothing to be afraid of. If you try to get closer, I'll make the good suffer even more. Gah question mark exclamation mark. GGG Leto increases the device's output and the prisoners scream painfully. Stop it. Then don't resist. I understand. Claw raised his hands to show that he would not resist. Leto nods in satisfaction and switches off the device. With the pain gone, they stopped screaming. But most of them had cramps and passed out. You know, I always value those who have power like you. What do you think? Would you like to join me? I refuse. I'd rather die than do evil. Hey, you're an ally of justice. But I have hostages, you know? Don't you care about them? If you refuse, those people behind you will have to suffer. Leto's eyes turn to those who are being held captive. Indeed, Leto is now in control of the situation. With that device, all the people with slave collars are like hostages. Claw keeps his hands up and remains silent. Claw's power is strong. No, he is too strong. But Leto has seen his power in another room and thought. With this power, you can do anything he wants. He wants this power. That was why he risked everything to come out here. And he won the bet. As long as he has hostages, that power is his to command. Thinking of his own bright future ahead, Leto's face distorts. And he realizes, Claw's raised hand is forming to cope in shape. A split second later, Claw's fingers flick, and something invisible pierces both of Leto's wrists. A, R, 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 my, my hand R, did you think I don't have any way to attack from a long distance? I can send a bullet flying with Decopin, and it is enough killing power. One more shot, and then another shot. Air bullets pierce both of Leto's legs. A lot of blood spilled from his pierced hands and legs. My, my, my hand, my foot. Stop yelling, you scoundrel. Hago, Claw grabs Leto's head and lifts him up lightly. His fingers dig in the skull, and a cracking sound echoes. He had the upper hand just a moment ago, but now he is overwhelmingly defeated. No, one of his legs is already in the coffin. Wha, wait. I, I'll pay you. Tens millions, hundred million. So, let's wog ho giga, piece of shit. He, he, gush or, Leto's head was crushed by Claw's grip, then his body fell to the ground. Give my regards to Inma, the king of hell. Equals 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 Translator note, de Copin forehead flicking equals 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 other than go for PayPal and Patreon you can support Lupus Sensei translation by Disabling ad block, viewing and clicking ads, not reading from aggregate sites. Like and subscribe Lupus Sensei YouTube channel. Like and follow Lupus Sensei Facebook page. Like and follow Lupus Sensei Instagram. Follow Lupus Sensei TikTok.